Number one to talk about, actually, number one news, which has just been confirmed within the last couple of minutes. Lionel Messi has agreed to join Paris Saint-Germain on a two-year contract after leaving Barcelona. News that shocked the football world maybe a couple of weeks ago because we were under the impression that this little will-he-won't-he he dance that Messi was doing with Barcelona would inevitably lead to him signing a contract um, extension just because of the value that he brings to that club. Let alone, Don't get me wrong, it is because of the skill and obviously what he can bring to a team but in terms of just the value and the brand you know you wouldn't want to be the the director of football the president in charge of Barcelona who decided to kind of you know rescind the contract and not offer Messi uh, an extension on his deal you wouldn't want to be that guy but then in some quarters there was some suggestion out there being said that whole oh, this Barcelona team actually needs um, a kick in the a kick in the balls per se right they need to get a jolt they need some they need a shift in uh in their identity they need a shift in how they basically and their reliance how they play and maybe the best way to go about it is to basically sell your talisman sell your marquee player sell the person where the entire football goes through him because you know rightly he is the best player in the world and kind of maybe evolve into a more cohesive team unit and if you think about it from the previous regimes maybe people would say the point where Messi was the best team player maybe for Barcelona was when he was coached under Pep right it was a bit more of a key system but then again they had far better players than they do nowadays regardless um you didn't really think it would ever happen and now it finally has happened you actually see Messi here in this picture um standing outside I think it's at the airport or window of his apartment somewhere you know soaking all the love from the Parisian fans at PSG and the article says the following now Messi has agreed to join Paris Saint-Germain on a two-year contract. The six-time Ballon d'Or winner, six-time, god damn it, arrived in Paris Tuesday afternoon to still his move to the French club on a two-year deal with an option to a third worth 25 point 25 million sorry point 25 million per year after tax plus bonuses which is quite insane i think the uh, the figure that people are coming up to is about 30 million a year which then kind of equals about 500 to 650 thousand per week that he's uh, getting from barcelona sorry from Paris Saint Germain, which again makes complete sense but it's just interesting to see the amount of revenue or the amount of money passion are willing to kind of part with in order to secure his transfer makes me think straight away when i see those numbers how much is he generating for that club he must be generating because there's no way you know m for the most part most clubs unless you're united they don't just throw away on contracts willy-nilly if they're giving you a contract they're mostly calculating that they can get more out of you than you can get out of them right because in their eyes you know paying you 650 a week is relatively chump change in exchange for what they get and if you read what you if you believe what you read on twitter supposedly they put up the shirts um the official Lionel Messi 30 shirts on the PSG website and they sold out in less than a second, right? I'm sorry, less than a minute, which is absolutely insane. So of course, you know, you'd you'd imagine they'd get back their um their investment and some plus all the other stuff they're gonna do in terms of branding and he's probably gonna do interviews on all the other stations in terms of Middle East and all that stuff, you know, loads of stuff to come for it. But it says here the French um club posted a Twitter video teasing his arrival, accompanied with the words New Diamond in Paris with a press conference scheduled on Wednesday morning. Um, it continues with Messi who also received a 25 million signing on f <sighs> I didn't see about that you received a 25 million signing on fee as part of the move and was extended to the 21 year stay of Barcelona by signing a new five year deal this summer however the club announced on Thursday that the financial structure obstacles meant that the deal could not be complete hold on Messi who received da -da -da -da. okay um, the 34 year old said that he started, he wanted to stay at Barcelona and did everything that he could to remain the club including agreeing the 50% wage cut which again wasn't much of a wage cut if you're, if you're Messi and also if you really look at the numbers the wage cut wasn't really a wage cut if anything it just spread his what he'd get in the year over five you know so it's like mm, is it really a wage cut um, it continues especially if he reaches all his milestones and goals and whatnot he's easily going to clear that money but it continues however Barcelona are, ham are hamstrung by La Liga's rules on club spending and having half so have, and even having Messi's pay was not enough Messi had two other options after leaving Barcelona last week but has opted to join PSG with their potential to compete for major trophies including the Champions League understood to be the key factor in the decision to move to France which again, makes sense but 
Messi is also believed to be keen to reunite with Neymar, with whom he won two La Liga titles, three Copa del Rey, and the Champions League during a time at Barcelona. Asked about a move to PSG at his farewell press conference last week, he said there's one possibility to reach these heights. I had a lot of clubs call, a lot of interested clubs at the moment. Nothing is closed, but we're talking about a lot of things. But of course, that's all been confirmed now. Is in last bit here. Messi said he did not want to leave. The, the, the emotional tear. But yeah, the, the tears have definitely dried up now that he's kind of secured that big bank deal, mate. The tears have 100% cried. And um, there's final kind of clarity that the deal has been done and sorted and all the do I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed. Here's a video courtesy of Paris Saint-Germain pinned on their profile. It's already at 7.5 million views. It's only been released a couple of minutes ago. And it's already doing numbers. God damn it, my computer's running mad slow. Anyway, doesn't matter. You get the gist. Let's just take off the thing, the sound, because if my computer's running like on a madness, like I've got a million applications running, but I don't, don't know what's going on here. But let's press it again. Let's just see if we can play in the background. It's basically a video of them of it panning outside the Paris Saint Germain merch shop, scanning through, and I guess it goes out to the back and Messi stood there with his foot on the ball, on in in the stadium somewhere. I'm assuming that's where it probably leads out to because I'm assuming the merch shop is right, located right near the football stadium itself. And of course, there's a nice retail assistant there working, whilst everyone else is away at home sleeping. She's there working because retail you never sleep, you never rest around those just fingers days off. The camera pans out into the foyer area, looks like. I think, the, is it the shop right across the street from where the stadium is? I think I read that. And it goes, is it going? There we go. It passes through, back out to the stadium, it looks like. BMW, new, welcome. The stadium looks lovely, doesn't it? I wish he, what's Old Trafford look like that? But, you know, maybe that's too much to ask. One of the richest clubs in the world to have a stadium that looks, you know, state-of-the-art, modern. Way too much to ask for that, isn't it? It's scanning through, it's going through the corridors, into the train, into the, sorry, um, into the changing room. You see one shirt hung up on the wall. They don't quickly scan it. They continue going on because they want to show you the player on the pitch, I'm assuming. Hurry up, hurry up. It's a well done video, don't get me wrong, but too much wasting of time here. Back out to the main tunnel. And then as they head up to the pitch, you see Messi standing there with his foot on the ball, I'm assuming. Right? Oh my God, this video is so long winded, isn't it? longwinded.com it scans around the stadium and then we finally get to the bit where Messi's meant to be standing in the middle of the pitch right is it okay scans up go back on the pitch is he there in the center circle yep there he is boom Messi 30 insane in it absolutely wild times what a wild time to be alive what a wild time to be alive um I guess initial impressions of this would be it obviously put some really big pressure on Pochettino. Um, if ever there was a realisation that it doesn't really matter what he does in the league, he has to win it by default. And it doesn't really matter what he does in the domestic cups, he has to win those by default. The most important trophy he has to ensure that he secures for Paris Saint-Germain is the Champions League. They don't really, there's no real if, buts and maybes. He's operating on the highest echelons of football. He's kind of coaching one of the most expensively assembled teams in the history, especially when you consider what their weekly salaries are. Big names, big egos. They're going to have to win the Champions League. And the Champions League is one of the notoriously most difficult Champions Leagues, one of the most difficult, notorious, sorry, difficult trophies to win. So there's no guarantees there they're going to win it, right? There is none guarantees. Like there's so many other great teams who are under pressure to put their best foot forward in Europe as well, who aren't going to, you know, go, accept it lying down the, some teams are going to find accept it as a challenge to see that you know PSG have signed such a decorated player they're going to want to kind of you know prove that they can compete at that level too with those players that they gave in so it's no makes no difference so it's a big deal man it's a real 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 big deal um and again for for Pochettino you know he really needs to deliver if, if ever there was the time to do away with the idea that you're a choker this would be it you need everybody to you need to give everybody a reminder that no I'm a top class manager and what better way to do it than to win the Champions League the first one with Messi but I don't want also if 
Pochettino does win it with Messi in his team. I don't want people to say like, oh yeah, it's tainted because he's got Messi because come on, let's let's be fair. Do you know what I mean? If he doesn't win it, he's a joke of a manager, which I don't agree with. But if he does win it, people are going to be saying he's only won it because he's got the most expensively assembled teams in modern history. Cool, it doesn't matter. The fact remains, winning one of those, winning a European Cup, especially in the modern era that we're in now, it's just difficult. It's just much, much difficult. There's a more, I wouldn't say... There's not a monopoly on good players, really. You know, the Real Madrid and the Barcelona don't just have all the good players all the time. They're spread out amongst most of the leagues, especially the top, the top paying leagues. So you have to, you know, you don't have always have the best players. There's not a, an abundance of amazing coaches out there anymore. So of course you're not competing with the best of the best at all the times. So to actually win it at this level is far more difficult than I would assume would have won it back in the day. Even though, you know, it could be argued there was far better coaches and players still, the concentration of players, I think, is more spread out overall. There's a lot more players that are generally good or at a high level in loads of different teams. So it makes competition far more harder. And again, there's not a lot to separate them because most coaches, with the exception of a couple, are mostly on the same level, especially the younger ones coming up. They've still got to make a name for themselves, right? The Nagelsmanns, the Klops, not the Klops, not Klops the Lagunas, the Potches, all these guys coming up have still got to make a name for themselves. So there's a lot of work to be done in that regard. But yeah, Messi's at PSG. Who would have ever guessed it, innit? Who would have ever guessed it? But, you know, when somebody offers you a, what's that, 25 mil contract, you know, after tax minus the bonuses, you're probably going to jump at the calls. But it's just interesting to see that no other club came about to try and sign him, which maybe is a good representation or good reflection on how well run PSG are don't get me wrong they've got oil money fair enough and you know their resources are a little bit unfair compared to other clubs but in terms of creating an infrastructure of an actual proper football club that wants to win things it's just annoying that we seem to have billionaires owners in the Glazers at United who seem to want to do everything but invest in a team and create a structure and a culture that would kind of foster great footballing achievement as the number one thing as opposed to being a business but then these other teams have this dirty money quote unquote but they have people who actually want to they want the glory they want to be known as an owner of a team that wins league titles that win champions leagues i mean it's a such a big disconnect in that regard but maybe the fact that they got this deal done so quickly is a good representation of how well they run that they were able to kind of pounce it maybe again they were in preparation already because they were in talks last year when Messi had first kind of let it be known he went to leave but the fact that they were able to get it done so quickly um, and obviously they seemed that they were the only team really that were in for a fighting chance of signing him goes to show that you know the other teams in the world like they just don't know what they're doing really. they've kind of everyone's kind of got their finger in their asses isn't it for the most part and you would imagine of all the players that could be on the open market the one player you'd assume most teams would try even the top ones just attempt to try and sign him would be Messi, right? If Messi and Ronaldo are on the transfer market, Ronaldo, you could probably get away with not signing, right? He's a little bit more one-dimensional. Maybe he's not as um, ex especially explosive as Messi is nowadays in his older age. He's a bit more of a kind of, uh, you know, a striker that basically lives inside a box. He's still going to score, of course, you know, some an outlandish goal or two here and there, but he's just a quintessential, you know, tapping merchant for the for the lack of a better, better term. But with Messi, you've got somebody that can legitimately change the entire kind of outlook of a game on a dime. Do you know what I mean? Still, even now, his age, you'd think people would want to try and sign somebody of that level. But some people just, you know, just weren't at the races. And I guess here we are. Now, Messi signed for PSG. That PSG 30 shirt is going to be everywhere. People are going to be, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see the amount of people are going to be tuning into PSG matches on a daily, watching them playing sporting, you know, watching them play flipping Setentien and, you know, all these nonsense teams will be sick to see. But yeah, I'm looking forward to them. And I, I like seeing a healthy European um, footballing landscape in general, you know. And again, I'm, I just like seeing the fact that he's testing himself um, by playing in another league. It's just good to see in terms of a fan, you know, a football thing, just to see him, you know, it's not going to be much of a test because, you know, Liga isn't really up there with La Liga. But still, you just want to see him play against different players week in, week out, different environment, different teammates, see what happens, see what vibes. Even the Sergio Ramos storyline is interesting too, you know, long time enemies and foes when they're playing for their respective teams in Barcelona and Real Madrid and now their teammates like oh it's gonna be epic